السلام علیکم ڈاکٹر ارشد محمود ہیئر ان دس ویڈیو وی آر گوئنگ ٹو ڈسکس اے ویری امپورٹنٹ ٹاپک ان پیڈیٹک ایگزام پوائنٹ آف ویو پیڈیٹک ٹاکس اسٹیشنس اینڈ آلسو ان دا پیشنٹ مینجمنٹ سو دیٹ از انٹرپریٹیشن آف ڈگری ایوری اسٹوڈنٹ میڈیکل اسٹوڈنٹ شوڈ ہیو اے گریٹ ہولڈ آن دس ٹاپک سو وی ول لرن دس ٹاپک ان ڈیٹیل ان اے بریف اینڈ کرسپ ویو ان دس ویڈیو سو فرسٹ از دا سمبلس دیٹ آر کامنلی یوز ڈیورنگ دا pedigree that you should uh, be familiar with those things so this picture is showing all those symbols almost all of symbols so first a circle is shown that is blank circle it is for normal female then a blank square that is for normal male then a filled uh, circle and square that are for the affected or diseased male and females then are the half uh, filled circle and square that are for the heterozygous uh, uh, state then is the a filled circle with arrowhead this is showing that uh, the this is the proband case proband case are those cases who are the first case in the family then uh, two sips are shown who are arising from the single line so these are the twins there are two two type of twins one is the fraternal twin and other are the identical twins identical twins have same genetic material but there is some difference in fraternal twins so if the line is joining both the twins then these are uh, fraternal uh, they are the identical twin if the line is not joining them then they are fraternal twins so above is that again three normal girls a circle with three in it and the square with two in it are the two normal boys and if sex is unspecified then uh, the again it is uh, in the form of an oblique square then diseased is uh, shown by marking a line oblique line over it then if consanguineous marriage then two lines if non consanguineous then single line between them so first we will discuss some rules of uh, pedigree interpretation the rule number 1 is that first you have to look whether this type of pedigree is further dominant or recessive so i will like uh, share that whether the pedigree is dominant or recessive how will you differentiate now if there is a skipping of generation skipping of generation that uh, one generation is involved other is skipped then other is involved then other is skipped so that is the phenomena of recessive trait and if it is dominant then there will be no skipping of generations so important point is that if skipping of generation is there it is recessive if no it is dominant second is that recessive have carriers if a pedigree is showing you ca- some carrier then it is definitely a recessive trait if pedigree is showing no carriers then it is a dominant trait so two points to differentiate between dominant and recessive now how will you differentiate that it is autosomal pedigree or x linked pedigree the difference is that uh, in uh, x linked pedigree uh, and autosomal pedigree is that in autosomal pedigree the male can transfer his disease to both his sons and daughters similarly a, a female can transfer his disease to both sons and daughters well in uh, x linked pedigree this is not happening suppose a patient uh, with excellent recessive trait like hemophilia is unable to transfer the disease chromosome or disease genetic material to his the boys he will only transfer his, his chromosomes to the girls and which will be carrier similarly in uh, cases of in in cases of x linked dominant traits the male will uh, transfer will not transfer uh, disease to the his boys but he will transfer only to his girls so if both traits if both genders are involved and each gender is transferring disease to all the genders then it is uh, autosomal if is there is a discrepancy then there is x linked trait third is the mitochondrial so it is very easy to pick mitochondrial traits that in mitochondria the disease is spread only by the female so if you get a pedigree in which female is spreading a disease and his daughter are spreading a disease and disease is not spreaded by the his boys then this will be mitochondrial so we will now look on the pedigree charts non consanguineous marriage female affected all his sibs are affected non consanguineous marriage in next generation uh, if female is affected male is non affected all his sibs are affected so i have told you that if disease is spread by the only females and all next generation is affected and again the daughters are spreading to disease to all his children so that is mitochondrial pattern of inheritance so female all his generation the next female is mating normal male and all his kids are affected so this is mitochondrial inheritance pattern now 
by looking at pedigree there is no skippage of generation so it is a uh, dominant trait first thing second is that male is transmitting disease to both females and males next generation and in next generation male is transmitting disease to the females so it is dominant and autosomal how easy it is to identify the pedigree now this pedigree is uh, having skipping of generation so recessive trait one thing second is you see that only three males are involved so only males are involved skip no uh, skipping of generation so recessive trait and x linked and male is not transferring disease to next generation because he can only transfer in the form of carrier to his daughter so disease will not occur so this is very easy to uh, pick pedigree next is that uh, skipping of generation again is seen so that is recessive trait and again both males and females are involved so skipping of generation recessive males and females both are involved so it is a autosomal recessive trait uh, third is that now you can see that uh, a male and female are mating three females are involved okay two fem two females and one male is involved again female is mating with normal male and uh, again three kids are involved so there is no skipping of skipping of generation so it is a dominant trait both males and females are involved and males and females are transmitting disease to both genders so it is a autosomal dominant trait now why if in uh, mitochondrial inheritance pattern only females are involved only female are transmitting disease to next generation the reason is that female gamete has the mitochondrial dna while in male the mitochondria is used up for the locomotion purpose so mitochondrial dna is only in the ovum so only the female will transmit disease to the next generation so next important question in pedigree is that uh, you should know the recurrence risk of every disease so that will be asked so let's take the examples of that excellent recessive trait now if father is unaffected and mother is a carrier so mother has there are two x uh, chromosome in female and one x chromosome in male for excellent recessive trait to be uh, manifest disease uh, in female both x chromosome should be defective and male only one x chromosome should be defective so if female is carrier then uh, there are uh, the the one x chromosome is defective and one is normal so chances of uh, being a disease affected son is uh, 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 in every uh, sen, uh, in every pregnancy for a son to be defective is 50 percent because one chromosome is uh, defective and uh, the uh, there will be carrier daughter and uh, for daughter to be daughter to be uh, daughter will be carrier only and son will be disease and 50 percent chances of a son to be disease now next is the affected father unaffected mother the affected father will have one x chrome that defective so he will not as the father cannot transfer x chromosomes to his uh, sons only x chromosomes of mother come to that so the father x chromosome will go to daughters and daughter will be only carrier because they have two chromosome one is normal and one is found so important question here ask it is that uh, can a excellent recessive trait can manifest in females so answer is yes in conditions like in lionization of x chromosome where one x chromosome of female is not expressing a genetic, genetic material or in case of uh, turner syndrome where a female has one x chromosome so in these condition or in condition where father is affected and mother is carrier then in these three conditions there are chances that the excellent recessive trait can manifest in females now this is a, a case where if uh, the recurrence risks i will explain so the disease is mother is affected father is healthy all his children are diseased in second the uh, father is diseased and mother is normal all his children are healthy so again this is typical for the mitochondrial inheritance that mother is transmitting disease to all his kids while the father is unable to transfer disease because he is not having mitochondrial dna so excellent dominant inheritance in that case uh, you will not uh, get uh, there will be no uh, carrier as dominant uh, disorder so if the father affected father is affected and mother is unaffected so father will transfer his x chromosomes to his daughter he is unable to transfer his x chromosomes to his son so all the his, his daughter will be affected but son will be normal on other case if the uh, affected is the mother and father is normal so he will transfer his disease to both his uh, uh, sons and daughters so 50 percent chances even each son and each daughter are to be diseased now this is uh, showing a pattern where uh, two chromosomes in where the father is diseased and one chromosome is defective in next generation uh, the father uh, the 
the two kids are defective in the form of ek one male and female the male is marrying a normal female and again one kid is uh, having uh, fem- daughter is having defective so typical for the autosomal dominant pattern of inheritance so most important is where we will be asked about the recurrence risk is uh, autosomal recessive trait like thalassemia or other such conditions so in that uh, cases uh, there are in each child is very important to say that in every child there are 50% chances that they will be carrier 25% chances that they will be healthy and 25% uh, chances that they will be having disease so important thing is that the risk is for every child the third thing is that you should remember some example of all these uh, type of inheritance in mitochondrial pattern of inheritance like murph miller's uh, labor heredity optic neuropathy in autosomal recessive disorder like in case of thalassemia cystic fibrosis and uh, sickle cell uh, anemia in autosomal dominant disorder like uh, heredity spherocytosis and uh, uh, autosomal dominant like neurofibromatosis in excellent recessive like thalassemia like uh, uh, hunter lishnihan and uh, in uh, excellent dominant uh, disorder the examples are uh, excellent hypophosphatemic uh, rickets and uh, uh, the fragile x syndrome these also come and incontinence of pigmenti so you should also remember three to four example of all these uh, uh, conditions thank you